is Leah from Mommyish, and today I have a tutorial on how to create paths quickly in um, Photoshop CS, CC, whatever. Um, I can't do a tutorial for Photoshop Elements. I apologize for that in advance. My um, version of Photoshop Elements doesn't quite support it. Um, I believe that versions 10 and up do. Uh, however, the verbiage is a little different in Photoshop Elements. So when I would say create paths from shape um, or like brush path, it might say um, brush shape or something like that. Um, anyway, moving on. I have this journal card open. This is from the collab I did with Studio Basic, which is awesome. So check it out. Um, but basically we have this journaling area and it's um it's a pentagon right uh so i want to be able to show you two things that you can do um to make paths work for you not only in your design work but also as a scrapper all right so what i'm going to do here is i want to create a path of a um just like maybe a little bit of outlined in a color one of the colors from the kit so um i'm going to choose that orange color and uh, I'm gonna pick a brush and this is where you would just kind of have uh, fun I could actually even do like a, a stitching type brush but I don't think I'm gonna um, I'm just gonna get let's see I'm just gonna pick that brush uh, and initially I like to just make sure I have everything set to the size that I want it to be so I do have it at 20 I'm happy with it all right so what next well I'm gonna go ahead and create a layer above you know, above the layer, uh, the background itself. Now, um, it, for this type of shape, or actually for several shapes, you can use your polygonal lasso tool, which has become one of my most favorite things ever. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a line to each point uh, on the inside just a little, because it's kind of how I want my doodle to be. My doodle. Sounds like I just had an accident may make it to the bathroom all right and then as you um get to the end the little circle will pop up next to the uh, tool tip so that lets you know that you're about to connect it and it's going to make that selection just like that now what we're going to do is we're going to make this selection a path we do this by going to paths um if you don't have it pulled up you go um window and paths and uh, there's a little drop down and you choose make work path and um tolerance uh we'll keep it at one why not it's gonna look a little wonky right there it's being a little crazy but i think overall it should be okay uh i have my brush selected and everything and i'm just gonna go ahead and go back to my paths i have the layers over the top and stroke path uh, with the brush just like that and as you see it has created a little doodled outline for us neat right okay so what else can that path that we just made do for us what can it do for us well um, the other great thing about paths is being able to use them for um, text layers and easily uh, being able to manipulate I guess is the best way to put it where your text is going so I already have this path created actually no, because then the text is going to be right up against the line. And it's going to irritate the snot out of me. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our path. And where there's another option, make selection. And don't worry about the little settings, whatever. It does not matter. All right, so there we go. Now I'm going to go to select, modify, contract, meaning we're going to make it smaller. And by 20 pixels, I think that'll work. So now we have this new selection area. That will not be right up on the line and now i'm going to make this a new path make work path we're gonna one whatever um so we have this new one again does not matter don't worry about all the little anchor points it's fine once you've made your path get out your text tool and you'll see there'll be a, like a little circle around the cursor that's when you know that you're in the money area and uh and then you can just start typing <laughs> uh, and you don't have to worry about um you know, is it going to, how do I have to hit return to make sure that it's not going to go over the line, blah, blah, blah. It's all done. So I'm going to start typing. 
Hi, people. I love y'all so much, and I'm so grateful that you are so tolerant of me. I'm not sure if I even spelled that right, but y'all don't care anyway. <laughs> right? All right. So, uh, as you see, as I'm typing, it's staying right in our nice little area. So the only thing I have to worry about at this point is uh, because I am how I am, I'm going to change my font. I'm going to make it look a little more handwritten. Let's see. What's a good one? That one's kind of cute. Uh, maybe a little bigger. What do y'all think? Bigger? Ooh, it's too big. And that's still too big. 20. We'll go with 18. Dang it. All right. <laughs> and then what I do, because I'm even more particular. Um, <laughs> that's going to be my word for today because I didn't want to say the other word. <laughs> uh, I, I would go to my line height spacing here because it's a little um, large for what we have. And I would just start playing around until everything was on the line where I want it to be. And uh, yeah, because that's, that's how I roll. Yeah, it would take a little playing, but I, I would get close. See, not too bad, right? But there you go. So that's that's another great usage of pads. So it can outline things. You can get text inside. You can also um, have fun and do text on the outside. That's you get that little uh, wavy line with your cursor and uh, text would then follow around. So it'd be like, hey, I am crazy text trying to follow the path because I am a follower and not a leader. See, just like that. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot you can do, right? <laughs> Who doesn't love pads? I absolutely love pads. I find them extremely useful all the time, I'm not saving that. But um, I'm going to pull up one more document to show you some tricks. And I'm going to pause for. All right, here's another journal card. Um, I want to show you how I use shapes also to create pads, um, which basically a shape is a path. It's just a filled in path. Um, and path literally meaning just like, just like you think is something uh, something you follow. So pads in Photoshop are things that Photoshop follows because it's like, I will do what you say. I will follow the path. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to use the rounded rectangle tool. I have my radius at 75 pixels because I really like the feel of that. And I'm just going to drag it here and, and create a shape going to fill it in. I don't care. I'm just going to go to um, zero just so I don't have to see it initially. And uh, once I have this perfect path created, which is a shape, I would then go to pads, little tab. I would double click it. I'm going to call this stitching path because I want to do a stitching brush on this. Um, once that's done, you can delete uh, the shape layer. Or the path like I just did. You can delete your shape layer. Don't delete your stitching path. Don't do that. You want it. I'm going to create a layer over the top. And I'm going to take uh, the color that I want the brush to be. And get out a stitching brush. Which I have one handy. I'm going to change the size a little bit. And uh, I'm going to just go to pads. Again, have my stitching path selected. Just like we were doing before. Stroke path. I'm not simulating the pressure. I do have brush selected and hit OK. And there I go. Bam. Just like that. I have stitching. Yay me. Um, now, some of you had shown me some really neat emboss effects. Um, I'm going to show you a very basic idea with that um, would be to just take your round brush, change the size to maybe 15 or so. Um, then you're going to go to your brush properties right here. And we're going to change the spacing. So it's like dotted. So it'll look like a cute little perforated edge. All right. So I have a new layer. I have paths. I have my stitching path. And I now I made my brush. And then I'm just going to stroke the path again. This is just for 
my purposes of, of showing you how you can do this on your own. I am going to create an action and styles to do this, but I figure I might as well show you how I do this, right? <laughs> so then you'll never get anything from me ever again. You'll be like, whatever, I know how to do it now. I don't need you, Leah. Um, I'm going to go to my layer. I'm going to turn the fill down to zero. And then I'm going to double click on my layer. And now my layer styles palette is up. And I'm just going to do an inner shadow because I think that would kind of work out all right. What do you think? And I'm just going to play with the settings a little bit um, to make the size not quite as big. I think I'm going to not use global light. Oh, that looks like it's poked out and not in, right? So there. Um, and just like that, that kind of makes it look a little bit. Maybe I should boof it up a little bit. Then I might do an outer glow and change the setting to that to normal. Um, or even maybe a linear burn and then turn down the opacity. So then it kind of looks like that. Um, I'm like, what else can we do to make this work? Uh, you could do a bevel and emboss as well uh but change the direction of it uh change the settings of it that kind of almost makes it look the same doesn't it you could do like an outer bevel which that looks good that looks okay right um but anyway that's that's one way you can kind of do your your own thing and now it looks like i have a little perforated um edging on my journal card just like that um so anyway i hope this has been somewhat helpful uh if you need more information or whatever, you have any requests for tutorials, just let me know. I'm more than willing because I want to do this every Tuesday, Tutorial Tuesday. Yay! And, uh, and so you can see how people who don't know how to use Photoshop, like me, use Photoshop. <laughs> All right. Have a great day. Bye-bye.